Hi everybody, Army P here for Exploraminate, and welcome back to my ongoing Let's Play of Stellaris 2.0 with the expansion Apocalypse installed. Now if you remember from last time, we were just kind of doing a little bit of a recap uh, when it comes to some of the new features. Of course, borders being one of them, shipyards being another major one. Um, and uh, I kind of just fast forward just a few years, because like I said in the previous video, you're going to notice that the beginning phase of... Stellaris has been slowed down considerably, so I'm just kind of fast forwarding to, you know, major events as, you know, in, in particular until we get to about the middle point of the actual game itself. Okay, so here we are. We got contact with the Spucklack. Spucklack. Sp That's pretty close. Spucklack Covenant. Let's see. Oh, there they are. They're a holy tribunal. This is one of the different races that our community members made, or the Empire, so I'm actually really happy to see them. They are a xenophile, pacifist, and spiritualist. Elder Czar and the rest of the religious council bids you greetings. We provide spiritual guidance to the Spucklack Covenant, and our stated goal is to lead uh, this great nation on a path of salvation. We would be honored if your great species were to join us on that journey. Well, that's... Uh, that's quite the offer. I don't know if necessarily uh, some of the Exploraminators are going to want to follow that path, but we're, they're also welcome if they choose to. Uh, we pursue true equality. Don't stand in our way. Hmm. Uh, okay. We're just going to say it's delighted to meet you. Now, let's just see where they are located. Oh, they're down here. Wow, we kind of... Uh, the southern part of our borders has definitely bumped up, because if you think about it, um, these three different nations are right next to each other, which... Um, cause a lot of friction. It's a good thing that uh, I've got a buffer because the only person I'm really worried about as it stands right now are the uh, Synthoid Supervisors, of course, because they're a machine race of rogative, rogue servitors. Anyway, when it comes to our location, you can see here that uh, the west is blocked off by two spatial anomalies and uh, so we're pretty much fo and with south being so jam-packed, we're kind of all just going to be pushing out east. In the meantime, as I kind of... Um, go forward I think I would should doing is maybe getting rid of this anomaly at 487 that way it'll be a good way to show combat too uh, 487 uh, power and I've got 300 and some yeah why not so I'm gonna go to the f uh, awesome fleet manager here one two uh, should have 380 um, that's not exactly what I wanted to do just because it cost a lot of my minerals. Okay, what trade-off do we have? A research agreement from the Solarian Alliance, or Sutherian. So I want to say Solarian because of Mass Effect. Man, it, this music, I think it's the music is reminding me so much of these new tracks in the Apocalypse game. It reminds me so much of Mass Effect, I can't get it off my brain. Okay, so we're going to be offering a total of, what, six different ones? And we're offering five. Um, yeah, so this is a good agreement for us. I think I'm going to take it. We've already got a migration treaty with them as well. I probably should have mentioned that. Where is our... Yes, yeah, so we've got a migration treaty with them as well. I don't know if any of our guys are actually planning on leaving. That's one of the best parts about having um, a high migration factor, is that uh, they're going to be enjoying that. So we might end up having with some Solarian or Sutherian Alliance members mixed in with our Exploraminators. Okay, I don't typically do this very often. I typically tend to just focus on energy and um, minerals at the beginning of the game, but Stellaris 2.0 um, changes a lot when it comes to science. I've already recapped this. You can see here that my systems are actually creating a tech cost increase of 16%. So I'm going to be kind of off-balancing that with um, building research pretty much right away. Construction complete. Okay, as we carry forward. Uh, well, we got a probe believe um, I think it's part of one of our situation logs it looks like one of them I'm not gonna focus on it too much I'll just say excellent okay so science ship is here we got two can't go here I don't want to do the orb necessarily right now uh, because I do believe that we have the infinity sphere there the infinity machine um, why can't we do that that's weird because um, what else are we gonna do I wonder if it's worth it. 
think he's going to allow me to get list fail. He does. So if I took Terran, let's see that I'm going to change that at 20%. Uh, no, I don't think it's going to be the case. I'm actually probably going to start backfilling that a little bit later. Might as well carry on and start continuing where our borders are going to go. Let's see what... Complete. Oh, wicked. Our borders are now increasing. Although it's very, very interesting. I really like the new border system. I like planning out where my borders are going to go. I also like kind of... That's the best part is you can kind of look forward to it. Oh, what's going on here? I didn't want that. No, it's one thing I really like is you can kind of plan out uh, how you're actually going to block other empires and actually screw them over a little bit. In this particular case, I've got so many friendly neighbors to the south here that's not really bothering me too much. But that being said, I mean, if I wanted to, I could actually kind of try to snake my way over here. You can kind of see where my icon's going and to really, you know, um, block the Sutherian um, border expansion. Okay, we've got some research complete. What are we going to do? Uh, you'll notice like a lot of different of these technologies have, are showing up at different locations. One of them, uh, obviously, is you know you got carrier options, basic strike craft. We don't have the bombers and the fighters options anymore. They've been amalgamated into one. And the reason that's a big deal is because you can put a, a hangar bay um, onto your star base as part of your defense. So it can um, offer point defense and attack for the strike craft, which is awesome. Although I don't think we're going to be going with that today. I'm kind of wondering, I'm kind of worrying, I'm curious, do you think that the Exploriminators would appreciate robots? I don't see a reason why we wouldn't. Uh, no, I think what we're going to do is going to go and get some better armor. That's what we're going to be doing. Okay, so you're level 3, so I'm going to get you to come back and start doing this. You've expanded far enough. I typically like to get about 10% risk fail for my um, different anomalies because you can see my borders are going to be really, really close uh, to these anomalies and I want to be able to have them in my borders to reap those juicy rewards, especially when they get out, you know, some, some top end bonuses. We are running a tad low on, on minerals here. Hopefully we get that topped up. Okay, so what do we got? I got 487, I got 477 military power. I think I'm going to save up for just a few more Corvettes, show you guys what combat looks like, and we're going to take out this uh, subspace anomaly. You're going down, son. Nothing stands in the way of progress of the explorations. Okay. Might as well do that now. Actually, going to bring this guy over here. That's my construction, construction ship. Complete. Okay, and what are we doing for energy? We're actually a little high. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my fleet manager. See if I can't get two more. How much is that going to cost me? Okay, I can only do one at a time. So this is an interesting little tidbit that you're going to notice. Um, this is the reinforced fleet button, which is, of course, what you how you plan out your fleets, and etc. But if you don't have enough money, uh, you can build part of a fleet. You just have to pay, um, you know, pay attention to it. So it's not like an all-or-nothing situation where um, you can only have enough money to reinforce the entire fleet. They will allow you to build certain portions of it. It'll, I don't know how it necessarily determines that. Probably the cheapest ships first. But that being said, it gives you a kind of like a cue up here of what you're going to do. And then I figured out, because I'm a genius, in reality I'm just actually not particularly bright, um... If you look here on the right-hand side, you see the military fleet. Um, it shows you 11 out of 20. Now, I believe it's tw like 20 in the size of my fleet that I can have in general. I think that's tied into the naval capacity. And 12 is what my fleet is. So it's like 11 of a possible 20, and 12 is what our current status is on it. It's a little confusing. You'd think this would be a little bit more clear. But anyway, that's what I should have on my fleet. And when the reason it's showing up blue is because I'm building it. It hasn't been fully reinforced yet. Okay, what do we got for oh good energy plant? That's always good. I think we're going to go with combat rolls. While we're at it, I'm going to take out... Look at our ship design. I'm pretty sure we've got everything that we want. Uh, I think I'm going to put... I uh, shouldn't. 50% shield damage. I'm just going to put one mass driver on there. Upgrade. I'll upgrade once the Corvette's built. Okay, where are you? 
We are not getting a lot. Oh, there's a, a, an 8 here. That's not too shabby. That's what I've been looking for. I'm, I'm a little um, surprised at just how deprived I am when it comes to minerals. That's just the RNG gods not liking the explorination, I think. Um, what are we going to do here? I think we're going to move you over here. And what do we got? You have encountered some form aliens. Samarans? What's this? Ooh. Okay, those are space cows. Um, what it makes us do? Investigate it. Eight months. What am I doing with my social? Uh, farms. Yeah, why not? I don't see a reason why we couldn't, actually. Why don't we go to the situation logs? Uh, and we've got two different aliens. Let's do this one. And we'll do it back to back. We put a year and a half of, of research into different space aliens. Okay. Got an anomaly, good to go. We've got our ships. Okay, so now you can see here 12 of 20, which has to do with my cap, although it says 21 up here. Um, maybe, eh, it's a little confusing how it, it, it gives conflicting information, and I'm never too sure how to make of that. But anyway, it's 12 of 12, and you notice that the 12 uh, in brackets have gone from blue to um, orange font, and the reason they did that is because it lets you know that, that the fleet is fully capped. There's no other ships being built for it. Uh, reinforce. No, I don't want that. I want upgrade. Ships upgraded. Perfect. Okay, so we are going to be showing off combat. I've got a total of 572. And that's going to be taking on the spatial anomaly of 487, so that's good. Oh, it looks like we're going to be going to our first ascension perk, which is awesome, because we're going to be able to show off... Um, well, some of the different ascension perks. Okay, faith uh, and science, which is awesome. Essentially, what I'm going to be doing is uh, any type of assist research will give one unity per science. So when I eventually get a different planet, and then I'll be start popping a lot of different science, and its science output goes down, we're going to be dedicating a um, science ship to provide assistance on it. Okay, so we're looking at the ascension perks for 2.0. Some of them are the same. Uh, some of them have the same title, but have changed. So you can see here that Interstellar Dominion used to be an increase in border. Uh, now that the borders don't increase naturally or organically or whatever, how they used to do it before, based off of, you know, different traits and your population. You can see here that the subspace inf or starbase influence costs are down 20% and claims influence costs down 20 So that's really interesting because, of course, we haven't gone into claims quite yet, but that's actually a big deal because the length of your war is going to be determined off of various things i do believe from what i've played so far you can correct me in the comment section below if you're reading or watching this in the future somewhere but i do believe that the length of the war based off of your war exhaustion is very much tied and and largely tied to the amount of claims that you put down uh, i don't want to get off topic too too much we'll get into that later but anyway it's just an example of how interstellar dominion has changed um, plus 10% in uh, increased for research speed, the same. Monthly unity and government ethics attraction. Wow, that's actually not too bad. Uh, I'm going to go with, um, Master of Na or Mastery of Nature. It's this, it's just an, an, also a really good choice. Core systems plus five. Um, executive vigor, yeah, edict duration. The edicts are far more powerful now. There's, and there's various, um, edicts that you can actually uh, put down. Uh, they're not so much tied to the planet anymore. They're tied to uh, an empire, and they're actually very, very powerful. Uh, and they do make, they do use a mixture of um, energy and um, and influence. Um, so I want that mastery of nature just because it's got actually the cool. It's actually very cool. It used to be that you just cleared all your um, tile blockers off for like a ridiculously low price, and um, it also gave you all of the unlocked tech to clear out any planet. It was way, way, way OP. And although they have changed a little bit from its initial con initial um, introduction, which happened with the Utopia expansion, um, it's still very powerful. Now they've changed it completely, so that they're, they're, now you don't get the tech, which is fine, but you get to clear blocker cost down 33%, which is good, but this is the cool part about it. You got a planetary edict on every planet that you can actually increase the planet size from one to three tiles, and three being more frequent on smaller planets. 
although you cannot use it on anything above 25. 25 still seems like that's the max. But uh, really interesting, so I'm going to take that because I think that's awesome. So what do we got here? If we went to the edict list, 500 uh, cost and uh, 100 influence, we can increase that by the tile. We're not going to bother now because, of course, we've got um, some uh, options here for pop growth. We're not going to be worried about it too, too much. But it's an interesting one, and it also means that when I start to take planets, like this little guy here, it's a continental world, um, 15 population, and I probably should be looking at that pretty quick. Battle wreckage, Jay, what's this? Hi, Space Cow. It's interesting. Oh, and there's a planet here. Tundra, eh? Hmm. Okay, so well, without further ado, we are, our Corvettes were flying into battle, so I do believe that they're in here. You can see that they have to go from exit point to exit point. Here we go. Okay, what do we got? Oh, well, it says 311. That's odd. Because out here, if you remember, when I looked at it, it said 400 and something. Interesting. Anyway, so let's see if we can take this bad boy down and uh, get our... get expanding. Now you'll notice here, I'm going to keep it on fastest, which is I typically play, um, but watch how fast combat plays out. It, uh, it's, 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 it's much faster, like in terms of its actual speed. Now it's too bad it didn't happen. You can see here that I didn't lo it doesn't look like I lost anybody um, in the actual battle. But we'll, we'll get into combat later on when we get, you know, maybe when pirates start showing up. Anyway, what happens is there's an av availability for your ships to actually warp out when it's damaged. And you that plays a big factor in um, combat in general now. And I'll explain that more later, but it's a really cool concept. But I've been in battles where I've actually lost the... I, I've lost the battle. And only in 40% uh, of my fleet was able to warp out. So as the enemy pushed into my borders in a previous game that I was playing off camera, uh, they were actually... I was able to repair my fleet and slow them down even further by only giving up like one or two systems whereas before if you remember in you know pre 2.0 if you lost your your fleet you might as well just com it just admit complete um uh, you know completely uh, give up 100 percent surrender 100 percent because you'll never get a fleet big enough to actually kind of counter that so i'm digressing okay it looks like we got another thing here i want you to go back you can see here the icon is also changed letting you know that you have damage so do, do that. I probably should have actually kind of um, spent a little time explaining a little bit about. Um, yeah, well, we'll get into combat later. I was a little. I was kind of thinking that maybe I should have talked a little bit about the ship construction now because um, we've got ship shields and hull and hit points, and, and then you have to wear each one of them down. But I'm going to get more into that uh, when we start doing some big boy battles. Okay, I think I am going to. Do our first colony. Ooh, look at this. Ooh, juicy, juicy, juice. That's not too shabby. Where is my... Where is my guy? Okay, he's on his way. So we're going to be taking this claim. We're going to be claiming this right away. That is some really nice output. You can see here it's perfect because my, <laughs> my society research is actually down by six. There's nine here. It'll actually be leading it. And in the meantime, I think I am going to... Special project. Uh, what are we going to do with this planet? I have two planets that I can go off of. i got my continental world here, but the reason I don't like this is because the habitability is plus 50%, which gives it, I think, what, 65? Yeah, i got a total of 65 that I could possibly go with. Even though it's a bigger planet, I'm actually thinking I'm going to do this. And I, by doing this, I actually think that I'm going to try to get a little bit of money wrapped together and maybe show you nature of... Uh, mastery of nature, kind of show that. So that'll be kind of uh, something to show off. And another reason why I don't want to take this one is because it's get providing me with four minerals per tick per month. That's a big deal. Okay, what else? Uh, okay, Mrs. Dorakina. Please research that tech. Okay, fleets are good to go. Construction mm -hmm. complete. What do we have? Can you upgrade? You can. And can you upgrade? You can. Okay. So, trying to keep our research going firm and strong. Uh, what do we have here? We definitely have enough to extend our borders. 
plus 6a. I think I am going to extend my borders, yep. The space cows, yay! Yeah, frequency tuning, I never used that. I used to, but uh, not so much anymore. Void clouds, we're going to research those. Survey complete. Okay, where are you, Mr. Uh, wow. I have to boogie on and snake my way over here. Look at this. Between these systems, I've got a total of 20 minerals that I can get. Jeez, oh, I hope that we can be able to get that. That's going to be tough to do to defend our borders. And that's one thing that I really, really like about the new pirate system is that... Oh, see, this is actually interesting. I'm going to talk about this for a little bit here. Uh, damage avoid clouds, that's good. Um, one of the things I really like about this is um, there's... Before I got off topic, the pirate system, the pirates are going to spawn all over the, all over your borders. Any place that you haven't um, got a star port actually, you know, installed, it will 100% um, spawn um, pirates. And then the pirates, depending, and I don't know exactly what the factors are, increase uh, in their, in their um, military power as the actual game progresses so it's not just this tiny little you know chunk of corvettes that are going to be causing trouble and the reason that's awesome is because the way that if as your borders start to get larger the distance and the and through hyper lanes and the travel speed makes it so that they can cause a lot of trouble for your empire if you don't have multiple fleets and multiple spaceports kind of defending your borders so it's actually a really cool mechanic i wasn't too sure if i was going to like it because i don't like uh, how they implemented it in uh, Endless Space 1. I hated pirates because they became so ridiculously powerful and the AI didn't mop up the di issues. Um, and it was, and in fact, it was like that was Civ 5, if I believe correctly. If like There were points where if, you know, you'd stumble upon these, you know, bar or um, I guess they were called barbarians, but you'd have them like later in the actual game and you're like, geez, like, they were so powerful because no one mopped them up, right? So far, it looks like they've kind of, they're, designed to be an economic menace versus like a legitimate empire threat. So I kind of like that fine balance that they figured out for it. Oh, it looks like we got some... Oh, and by the way, uh, afterburners are awesome! They increase sublight speed, which means you can get everywhere very quickly. Okay, I kind of wanted to look down here because it looks like the AI is really kind of sna <laughs> screwing themselves over. You say the Sutherian Alliance is kind of slinking down, going south, uh, and in doing so, it looks like they've... I don't know if they were even down here, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how who gets these systems right here where my icon is first because that's going to be a big deal. Whoever can kind of... If uh, the Sutherians are able to block this over, it's going to put a lot of pressure. And this uh, Spucklacks are doing their thing too, which is always, which is always nice. Okay. Keep exploring. I want you to explore because you keep, you, you got to remember that it also gives us, um, probability continuum. Oh, that is a, I don't know if I'm going to take this. Uh, probably not. So I, yeah, I'm not going to. It's, it's a, it's a bit of a waste and I want the influence, so. Okay, I think that is it for... Oh no, she can go here and chest that out. Perfect. Construction complete. Awesome. Okay, here we go. I want that plus nine first. It is easily the, the choice to take. After that, we will go and mine this. Construction complete. Alright, so our borders are expanded pretty good so far. I think I'm pretty close to being where I want to be, which is... I think I'm going to stick you there for the time being. Uh, I think I was going to colonize. So they have brought down the cost of a colony ship, and that is because, um, like I said earlier, the cost or the um, the value of planets has gone down. It's kind of been shared a little bit when it comes with, um, with starports. Dun, dun, dun. What do you got here? Mining? Wow, I'm running out of minerals, man. I feel definitely is a little bit deprived. And I don't even have enough energy. I was kind of thinking, well, maybe I could do a trade with one of these fine nations, but it does not seem interesting. Okay, what have we got here? Ooh, I don't want to declare war. I don't know why they put that right up there. Anyway, offer trade deal. Um, I, wonder if, I wonder if the AI would be interested in having some food for some minerals. Nope! <laughs> does not want to trade his minerals. I get it, I get it. 
Okay. Uh, da, da. Construction complete. Perfect. Okay. Um, where is my? I just realized how how foolish I am. After she's done this, I have to get her over. Um, here. After she's done. Okay, everybody. So that pretty much wraps up where we're going to be right now. You can kind of see that the game is progressing. Um, you know, pretty much exactly the way that we thought it was going to progress. Ooh, what was that? Sorry, before I go off kilter here. Yeah, I want re I want um, growth speed increase. So um, we've encountered a new race, the Spucklack Covenant. We've um, kind of dealing. We got a nice migration treaty. Um, and I noticed in the comment section before someone was mentioning about like shading out the um, hyper lanes. There's actually an option here just to turn them off. I think Ashberry was asking about that. So if you want to take a look at it, it still doesn't. Uh, I do agree though. They could probably shade them out just a little bit better. It is a little bit of an eyesore. Maybe it's something that we'll see in a future patch. Anyway, this has been uh, Army P from Exploramine. We're going to be starting our next episode with a new colony. Uh, and I'll probably show off building a spaceport, and of course, we're going to continue on and explore the unlocked and untapped potential of our western border. So, um, I'm probably going to play a little bit until something interesting kind of happens, and then uh, I will see you in the next episode.